Michelle Darla here with Growing Tropical. Well, you guys, I'm almost ready for Christmas. I have one final Christmas arrangement that I'm gonna to put together, and I'm a little excited because I'm gonna be using the bromeliads. You know, of all the Christmas color that's out there between the Christmas cactuses and the poinsettias that are just, you know, all over the nurseries here in South Florida, the bromeliads are all over as well. And for as much as the bromeliads are all over the nursery counters, I usually just kind of walk by them, even though I grow them here in our landscape. And I will put them in occasionally, not necessarily an arrangement, but I'll buy a couple of bromeliads and I'll just kind of pop them down into um, a little, you know, little growing medium or whatever and kind of put them off to the side. I've never really, really just taken them and, you know, made arrangements out of them. So again, I'm a little excited to be doing this today and to be incorporating them into um, an arrangement for for the Christmas holiday. And um, I'm gonna be growing a couple of other plants with them. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna be putting all this together, but the staple plant in this beautiful white bowl that I found at Home Goods, um, I just thought, I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. And I thought being white, it would absolutely stand out very beautifully along with these beautiful green strappy leaves and the beautiful red bracts of the bromeliad. So just a little bit um, on the bromeliad. I, I'm gonna, um, in the description of this video, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and put um, a little bit more information about bromeliads and the care and such um, if you are interested. And also, if you guys are watching this video or any of you guys who are watching this video who live in northern climates, don't click off me just yet because you may be thinking, oh no, Darla, this video is not for us. I, I live in Michigan or I live in Ohio or somewhere where it's really cold and I can never grow those. Don't leave just yet, you guys, because I'm telling you, these are beautiful, beautiful houseplants that anybody can grow. Now, the bromeliad, it thrives in temperatures of 55 degrees and warmer. And basically, y'all, that, that is most of our homes. I mean, most of our homes are gonna be at least 55 degrees or warmer. And so you can absolutely grow these beauties you, they require a low light, so just you know, find a maybe a window that doesn't necessarily have to get um, any type of a sun because they do not want a direct sun because they can definitely scorch their leaves. So if you just found a you know a bright window or even a window that just gets some low light, these guys are going to thrive for you. They're very very simple, so do not be intimidated. Actually, anybody who looks at bromeliads, do not be intimidated because. Even though they may look a little intimidating, they're very easy to care for. And again, like I said, temperatures are 55 degrees and warmer. They do like, they are a tropical plant, so they do like a humidity of about 60%. And if you live in climates where it's a little bit more, you know, arid, um, drier type stuff, you can take a, a, a water bottle and you can just kind of spray it, you know, daily. Um, or, you know, taking your shower. If you want to, you can take it and just put it in your shower while you're showering and steam is really good for the leaves. But all in all, y'all, they are very easy to care for plants. Um, they are, um, they have a little, a cool thing. It's a water reservoir that is down inside. If you can see down inside in here, where you just kind of fill up that little reservoir, probably about, maybe about a quarter away up um, the, the, the base, I guess you would call that, the little cup that's in there, maybe about a quarter of the way. And you'd only have to change it out. I change mine out probably, I don't know, every couple of weeks. Basically you fill it up and then after a couple of weeks, you just dump it all, you know, just dump it all out and change it. Or you could actually put it under your sink and let your sink water just kind of run in there and let it just kind of, you know, clean the water out and put new water in there. You, um, they say actually that you should use like a distilled water or like a filtered water. But honestly, y'all, I've just put it under my sink and there's no filter on my sink or anything like that. And I have really not had any issues with my bromeliads. That's been my experience anyway. So, um, and then the other thing is um, because bromeliads are, they don't necessarily require a soil to grow in. You know, a lot of times, well, in their native, in their native growth um, habits or whatever, a lot of times they're, they're hanging or dangling from trees they're in, you know, crevices or, you know, growing in between rocks and their little root systems just attach themselves right to, you know, those things, not for nutrition, but for support. And so because they're, you know, hanging and they're not in the soil or whatever, um, they derive their nutrients from mother nature through rainwater, hence the little base reservoir that is down in the center here. So anyway, they're very, very cool. They come in many, many different colors. 
Um, I'm gonna have, have my husband pop up some pictures of the colors uh, above the screen here. Um, the red, as you see here, they come in like a brilliant purple, they come in yellows and oranges, just beautiful, beautiful colors. And again, I chose the red one because of the Christmas holiday. And um, the other thing um, that you wanna make sure, again, like I said, um, they don't necessarily need a, um, a medium, like a, a growing medium to grow in, but if you are going to put them in, much like I'm going to today, I'm gonna to be using a mix, actually, to make that fall over. I'm gonna be growing them actually in a, in a planting mix that's gonna be designed for bromeliads. But if you can't find something that broke for like bromeliads, you can actually buy like an orchid mix. All you need to make sure is that you're using something that is extremely well draining, something that has got, I call it like chunky. You wanna use a, a growing medium that's a, like got a chunkiness to it where there's not really like a whole lot of soil because these guys, well, first of all, they don't necessarily need it and they need to be, uh, they, their roots really need to breathe. So um, it's really important to make sure that you, you know, don't use just a typical, you know, regular, like, um, you know, like most of our containers uh, that we use, like a, you know, a regular potting mix. I would definitely, you know, not, I would definitely tell you guys not to use something like that, but to defer to more of a blend that's designed for vermilions or again, orchid, an orchid blend is also a very good one too. So um, anyway, I'm trying to think if there's anything else um, that we need to talk about with the vermilion. Um, the, moving along a little bit here, um, I'm going to use, and I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to use all the plants that are on the table here. Um, I've got a pothos here. I've got two of them actually, and I was thinking about maybe nestling that down inside because who can, you can't go wrong with the pothos. I just, I love them. They just, they basically go with almost anything here. In all my containers, I use a, a lot of pothos. So I'm going to try to be incorporating that. Um, I bought some anthurium and I love anthurium. This is another beautiful tropical plant. Um, the care is basically the same type of care that you would give your bromeliad. Um, even though they are tropical, you know, they temp temperature 55 degrees and warmer, so a, a beautiful house plant, um, a nice, um, these can actually take low light, but if you put them in more of a brighter window, they'll do perfectly fine as long as they don't get a direct sunlight because they too will burn. But they also like to be nice and um, moist, but not boggy. And when I say also, the what I mean by that is the bromeliads, their, their soil doesn't necessarily need to be moist, but their water cup, you wouldn't want that to dry out. You want to always keep that water cup or that vase or reservoir. You always want to make sure that you've got water in there for, for your bromeliad and you don't let that dry out. So I thought that the anthurium would be a really good um, companion plant with that and look really pretty. Maybe just to add a different pop of red. I'm not real sure, but anyway, I've got two of those. And then the last one, I had just a leftover rabbit's foot uh, fern. Again, tropical. Uh, this guy needs a very moist, you know, soil to grow in, a very indirect light, beautiful house plant. Um, so everything that I have here on the table is very, um, uh, very, make good companion plants. They will all, you know, thrive in the same, basically the same type of conditions. As far as the pothos is concerned, this guy, my gosh, y'all, you can grow this in um, pretty much any soil. <laughs> I, it is hard to kill a pothos, in, in my experience anyway. They're so easy growing. I mean, I've even had them where I was, um, I was taking them out of pots and I was dividing them and I kind of threw them off to the side and a couple of them I forgot and they just, they continued to thrive you know, roots are exposed to the air. There was no soil on them and they were still thriving. Not that I recommend that you do that, but my point is there's extremely, um, they will go with this arrangement very well as far as the conditions that they'll be growing in. So anyway, the, um, the other final thing that I'm gonna be doing once I get everything planted in here is I'm going to be putting, um, using a Spanish moss. Now this is just dried, so it's not really living. There are some Spanish mosses that you can actually purchase that they dry and um, you can bring it home and put it in your containers. And um, through frequent watering, it will come back to life. But then there are others, much like this one, I think once it's been dried, really dried like for a while or whatever i don't think spanish moss will absolutely come back because usually i mean spanish moss you can you know go and yank it out of your trees here in florida it's a native here so i can go to the to the pine tree or to the oak trees and yank it out and if i would put it in you know here it it would actually 
um, you know, just be revived as I add water and it, and it would continue to thrive and grow. But this is dried, very dried, and it's, um, it's dyed up really pretty green, which I thought would be really, really pretty. Well, Hera, what's happening with you? You want to come in the house? Yeah. Like I say, Hera wants to come in. Yeah. <laughs> Go to mommy. He wants to let you yeah. in. <laughs> Our little Hera wants to come in the house. It's too cool out here for her. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to be dressing this up with some uh, Spanish moss. So that is um, that is another really pretty um, additive that I'm going to be putting there. Now, as for the container, again, this is just, it's very lightweight. I was very surprised when I bought this. Um, I got this from Home Goods, but I just fell in love with it. I just love the bright white, um, you know, uh, container. And I thought it would just be so pretty up against all of this beautiful dark green strappy um, uh, dark green foliage or whatever color and then of course you know the pothos or whatever has got the variegated color on it I just thought the bowl would stand out so well that it's very lightweight and I was really surprised but um, as with all of your containers um, y'all you definitely want to make sure that you have a hole in the bottom now my husband he actually drilled this hole for me I'm gonna have him pop this um, um, the picture uh, on the top of this uh, video so you guys can see what he's actually doing but we brought this home and he used a diamond or a ceramic bit I believe on his drill and basically what we did was we just flipped it upside down like yay and he added a little bit of water there's like a little um, a little lip here he added a little bit of water down here or whatever um, that way it would it would drill a lot easier and I believe you're supposed to do that. Um, he says you're supposed to do that with water. And then what he did is he used two types of bits. He used a smaller bit first to go ahead and get his hole in there. And then the second bit was the larger bit where he was able to actually go ahead and make it, um, you know, make it a pretty good size for my drainage hole. But again, like I said, he popped it up on the screen so you guys could kind of follow along and see what he did. And um, I will leave like um, you know the type of bit and everything in the description of this video if you guys are interested but that is very important to make sure that you have a drainage hole so you guys what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just start planting this guy up and when we are done we're gonna come back and we'll take a look at it and where I'm gonna actually put it in our home putting it together what do you think I'm very very pleased with the way it turned out and from this moment forward I am definitely going to be utilizing more bromeliads in my Christmas arrangements because I think they're absolutely stunning the only other thing that I'm going to do is I have um, I'm going to scoot this aside just a little bit here but I had purchased um, actually several weeks ago now I was in home goods and I just purchased a bunch of little dry goods they came in a little baggie that looked like whoops that looked like this and they're just um you know pine cones and dried pomegranates and um gosh all kinds it looks like that might even be like a little faux orange just some really really cool dried gifts that are all very decorative 
um, you know, very Christmassy. And I thought what I might do, I, I was very fond of this right here, but I thought what I might do is just for the holidays, maybe tuck some really pretty, um, I'd like to get where it's something red, the contrast, but might just tuck a few things down there like yay, um, put a few of these like guys in there just for the Christmas holiday, just to give a little extra pop maybe to the arrangement. And um, I think I have the perfect spot that I'm going to put it now that I have it all together. I do believe that I'm going to be arranging it in a certain area. And what I'll do is um, I am going to uh, show it to you after I have it in place just to make sure that's where I want it. But you guys, um, I hope that you have derived some inspiration from me putting this bromeliad uh, centerpiece together or this bromeliad arrangement together. And for the, any of those um, out there, any of you guys out there that are watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, there is no way that I am going to be growing uh, bromeliads, definitely think twice about that because bromeliads are not as complicated as what you may, what you may think. They just require some very, very minor things and that is just maintaining a temperature above 55 degrees. Most of our homes will provide that, uh, providing a little extra humidity if you live in a, in a you know, a climate that does that's a little bit more dry or on the arid side, and uh, making sure that their little cups are, you know, about a quarter cup of the way filled with water, and uh, putting it in a low light situation, no direct sun in your in your home, and you're good to go. And I, like again, like I said, you know, we always grow the simple or the staple things like the poinsettias, and I love poinsettias, don't get me wrong, I've got them all over the place, but I am definitely going to be incorporating more bromeliads into my lifestyle, and especially for the Christmas holiday with these beautiful red uh, bracts of color. So again, you guys, Merry Christmas to all of you out there. Uh, if you like this video, please do not forget to uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. So until the next video, bye y'all.